Today on Race Breaks, we have Nolan Casper, the myth, the legend, the man himself. What's going on, Nolan? Not much. How you doing? Doing great. Thanks for coming on. Absolutely. You know, something to break up the monotony of COVID-19. Where are you at right now? I'm at a buddy's place up in Connecticut. Okay. So, escape the city and uh, hunkering down here for a while. Hopefully, everyone in, in your neck of the woods is safe, healthy, and um, everyone's definitely excited to hear what you have to say about some fun questions that all the fans asked. Well, let's get right to it. All right. As a veteran on the tour, um, you've been skiing on the World Pro Ski Tour for the past three years. What is the biggest change or improvement you've seen since then? I think there, there's been a lot of really, really good improvements. Um, I know the first couple of years, um, I mean, this this tour is really built around around the athletes, and I think we've gotten more and more formalized with with how how we run run races and and uh, and giving the athletes a voice, which I think is huge for making making us feel safe and comfortable when we're uh, when we're charging down the mountain. Um, but I also think there's been a huge uptick in uh, in the video presence and being able to watch the races online on Facebook. Uh, you know, it's it's it gets a, a much wider audience and you know friends and family can actually watch now so it's great yeah it's, it's something that the world pro ski tour has been pushing really hard toward um making the partnerships with cbs sports network outside tv having the docu series in addition to having the live stream during the events i mean like you said we're here for you guys and allowing you guys to shine and, and let fans engage with you beyond just being at the venue is really something that we, we worked really hard to move towards. So that's awesome that that, that was your answer. Thank you. <laughs> so with over a decade of professional skiing and three Olympic games, what would you tell yourself 10 years ago? 10 years ago, I don't think I'd torn my ACL for the first time. So maybe I would have told myself to take only seven runs before the Val d'Isere World Cup that year instead of eight. Damn it. Ow. <laughs> Lucky, unlucky number eight. Has eight yeah, shown exactly. up in your life any other times besides that eighth run? I don't think I, I ever took prior to or thereafter eight runs the day before a race. So probably just a bad idea in general. So be a little less gung-ho on the warm-up days. <laughs> no, I think, I think the moral of the story was if you're struggling a bit, take it easy. Okay. Trust your training and... You know, things will work out. Well, baby Nolan, listen up. Serious talk. <laughs> well, hey, let's get to the fan question. I'm going to pull up the photo that we put up of you. There were a lot of awesome questions that came through both on Facebook and Instagram. Remember, whichever question Nolan picks right now, you get your pick of World Pro Ski Tour swag. Take it away, Nolan. Oh, all right. We've got, we've got some good ones, but, you know, I think... Uh... I think I'm gonna have to go with this one from uh, from an RM Kaiser, and he asks, "What's your favorite combo of World Cup race venue and post race bar? Is there anything better than Schladming?" And the answer to that is Schladming does probably have the best atmosphere in terms of race, being a night race. Being in Austria, you've got 40, 50 thousand people there. As slalom skiers, we're in and out. So uh, I'd say I'd have to I'd have to give it to Kitzbühel. One year we had a makeup race. They had to move the race from Sunday to Friday. So we had a night slalom at Kitzbühel on a Friday night. Friday night lights. This was, uh, it was especially, it was a great day for me because I was struggling a bit, came back and got 18th that race and qualified for the Olympics. Um, but we also got to go out to an infamous bar called The Londoner, which if anyone knows Kitzbühel, Austria, this is the one bar in town where after all the speed races, all the speed guys end up there and uh, you end up getting a lot of them bartend, you know, You'll get Bodie behind the bar, Darren, Herman, <laughs> all these legendary athletes. And the one year the slalom guys got to race on a Friday and enjoy the weekend and watch the speed races, I somehow got behind the bar. And uh, yes. first thing, they, the entire bar staff dumped a beer in my head. I go out and uh, Felix Neurider takes my shirt off, throws it into the crowd, and we are the bar for the night. That, I, don't think, I don't think anything can top that. That's amazing. <laughs> Probably not. I don't know. That sounds like the spot to be at. And what a cool thing to be able to have that scheduling change play out to your benefit. You qualified for the Olympics. You bartended for the night. Man, that sounds like an epic one. It was it was a pretty solid night. I think you'd uh, you'd have to get Mike Lankney back on here to ask him his opinion as well. We, we should do that. Let's, from his <laughs> let's call him Michael. No, I'm just kidding. Well, <laughs> Nolan, thanks for coming on, man. Really appreciate you. Hope you have a 
safe, healthy, and fun summer. And um, we will see you in two weeks on 321 Trivia. Sounds good. And as always, stay drifty. <laughs> stay drifty. Take care, man. You too. See ya. Stay drifty.